Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to simplify a very complex, a very imaginary expression. Okay, there is a reason why I said that, you're going to notice when we got the answer. So we have cosine i plus i times sine i divided by cosine i minus i sine i. And I'll be presenting two approaches. And let's start with the first one. Okay. So for my first method, I'm going to use some identities. Hopefully you do remember from lecture notes, we talked about this and I've done quite a few problems. Cosine theta can be written as e to the i theta plus e to the negative i theta divided by two. And sine theta can be written as e to the i theta minus e to the negative i theta divided by two i. And some people are going to associate this with hyperbolic functions, which I'm trying to like these days. But anyways, that's a different story. Now, but theta, does it have to be real? That's a really good question, right? Does theta have to be real? Well, in this case, we're going to replace theta with i. So we're going to make it unreal or imaginary. So from here, cosine i is just going to be e to the power i times i, which is i squared and then negative i squared divided by 2. i squared is negative 1, so it's going to be e to the power negative 1 minus e to the power 1 divided by 2, and that means 1 over e minus e divided by 2. If you multiply the top and the bottom by e, which is pretty much the same thing as making a common denominator, we're going to get 1 minus e squared divided by 2. Okay? So that would be cosine of i. Actually, I should put a plus sign, sorry about that, because it's supposed to be a plus sign. So it'll be 1 plus e squared divided by 2e. Again, I forgot to multiply by e. So that would be the answer. Okay, it's fixed now. Don't worry about it. Don't panic. It's all good. Okay, so this is cosine i. Let's go ahead and evaluate sine i, and then we're going to plug it in. Sine i, if we replace theta with i here, we're going to get e to the i squared minus e to the negative i squared divided by 2i. Don't forget there's an i at the bottom and there's a minus sign. That's what makes it different from sine. Anyways, i squared is negative 1. This is 1 over e minus e divided by 2i. And that will be 1 minus e squared divided by 2ei or 2ie, however you want to write it. And this will be the sine i. So we got both of these values. Let's go ahead and plug them in. We're trying to evaluate cosine i plus i sine i divided by cosine i minus i sine i. Now cosine i is 1 plus e squared divided by 2e plus sine i is 1 minus i squared over 2ei multiplied by i and that is divided by the same thing with a minus sign. So just copy, just copy, copy, paste, copy, paste. All right. That's the expression. Let's go ahead and simplify this a little bit. It kind of looks complicated, right? Or does it look complex? Okay. Don't, don't forget that expression. Does this look complex? So I is going to cancel out. I is going to cancel out. Great. Now we get a common denominator. So we can just add the numerators and forget about the denominators because they are the same. 1 plus e squared plus 1 minus e squared divided by 1 plus e squared minus. I have to negate it because there's a minus sign in front of the parentheses. And then this expression can further be simplified. E squared cancels out. 1 cancels out. We end up with 2 over 2e squared, which can be written as 1 over e squared. If you want to write it as e to the power negative 2, you can do that as well. But this should be good enough. All right. So what is the conclusion? The conclusion is, even though this looks very complex, it's actually real. Isn't that also complex? Yes, but it's also real. So let's go ahead and take a look at the second approach and see how they compare, right? So we're supposed to evaluate this expression. Notice that the first method actually comes from Euler's formula, right? Which is e to the i theta equals cosine theta plus i sine theta. Great. Now we can definitely go ahead and use this. But how do you get cosine theta minus i sine theta, right? Well, 
you can basically just replace theta with negative theta and cosine is an even function so it's just going to absorb the negative and sine cannot absorb it's going to have to spit it out okay cool so that's what we get from here and by adding these and subtracting these you get the cosine and sine but that's not the point we're supposed to evaluate it directly because this is the second method right it's supposed to be better so we are trying to simplify cosine i plus i sine i divided by cosine i minus i sine i all you have to do is change the theta to i in both of these equations and you're going to get it in other words this is going to be e to the i times i and it's going to be e to the i times negative i or negative i times i and this is e to the i squared divided by e to the negative i squared. Remember, i squared is negative 1 and negative i squared is positive 1. So you get e to the power of negative 1 divided by e, which means 1 over e divided by e, which means 1 over e times 1 over e, which means 1 over e squared as before. So we get the same answer, which should not be a surprise, right? Because we're supposed to get the same answer. If you don't, then we're in trouble. So, the answer obvi obviously uh, is this method looks a little shorter, but you're still going to let me know which one you like better. But they're related, obviously. Another thing that we could have done is, because this is very common, cosine theta plus i sine theta, if that's divided by its conjugate, which is also its reciprocal, by the way, because the modulus is 1, think about it, uh, can actually be done like this. This is e to the i theta. This is e to the negative i theta. And so the, the, the angles or the exponentials tell us that we're supposed to subtract. And this gives us e to the power 2i theta. Therefore, we can directly replace theta with i here to get what we want from this function. Because that's our function, sort of like a, a function of theta. And if we do that, we're going to get from here cosine i plus i sine i divided by cosine i minus i sine i is going to be directly e to the power 2i times i, which is 2i squared, and that will be e to the power negative 2, and that will be written as 1 over e squared. Make sense? So we're getting the same answer just by considering the fact that dividing means subtracting the arguments right but in compact Euler's form obviously or polar form it's a lot easier to do and this brings us to the end of this video thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed it please let me know don't forget to comment like and subscribe i'll see you next time with another video until then be safe take care and bye bye